Well, good morning. Uh, thank you for uh, joining with me on this beautiful Lord's Day morning. I know a heavy frost last night. Um, we've saved you the trouble of going out to defrost your car um, for, for coming to church this morning. Um, obviously, we'd said last week we weren't sure how things would go this week, whether we'd be in church in the building or whether we would just be online. And we made a decision uh, during the week, really, we'll just go online. There's, uh, unfortunately, uh, so many uh, new COVID cases across the country, and we see it across uh, the UK. Uh, we felt that uh, we didn't want anybody feeling pressurised to, to come out to church uh, this morning into a public gathering, and uh, we just felt that it would be safer for everybody uh, to be able to stay at home. And then with the decision made, the schools uh, are going to be deferred for another week, where we feel that it was best. We want to do everything we can to keep everybody safe, to see COVID gone, and uh, we just keep praying for those in authority over us, those with the decisions, but we keep praying to the Lord uh, that really he will bring an end to the COVID. Uh, but um, So we're, we're online here this morning. Um, thank you for joining with me. I trust you've had a good week. Trust you've had a, a, a good new year. We do want to wish you a happy new year as well. We know it was all very different and even on Thursday evening we weren't able to have our normal gathering uh, here in the church hall for a night of fun and welcoming in the new year. We missed all that but hopefully uh, next year everything will be okay again. So we want to get through this immediate uh, period and see things hopefully return to the new norm is to talk about uh, normal as, 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 as soon as possible. I want to start this morning and I want to read uh, a couple of verses from Psalm 91. Um, George read these verses last week, um, really, as we finished off the year and as we thought of the, the COVID situation and all. And um, all of Psalm 91 is so, so appropriate, really, for all of that. But we're, we're, we're looking this morning as well at Psalm 61. And um, Psalm 91 ties in so well with what we're thinking about as well and we'll be doing that in a moment or two with the children just want to read a number of verses really i'm not going to read all of psalm 91 but uh, read the first uh, number of verses really just to lead us in our thoughts here as we start out into the new year and with all that is going on all around us but psalm 91 how beautiful are these words he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Then these words is really what's leading into what we're going to be thinking a little bit about this morning and we'll be mentioning at the very end of our service uh, as well, really bringing this theme around. Verse 4 He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. We'll end there at verse 6, but we'll be coming back and, and looking at particularly verse 4 and really tying all that in with this morning. So let's look to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray God's blessing upon our time uh, this morning around his word. Let's all pray. Father in heaven, as we bow before you this morning, it's a beautiful morning. We thank you, Father, for it. We thank you, Lord, for each of us who have health and strength to rise up to the new day. Perhaps, Father, there's some today and maybe they're they're still in a bed, maybe in a bed of sickness, our Father, and unable to be up today. But we pray your blessing, our Father, to be upon them. But your blessing to be upon us all. We want to thank you, Father, for the new year that you've given to us. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness throughout the past year. We know, Lord God, that for many, Lord, they were, uh, Lord, they were glad to see uh, 2021 uh, come. And, uh, Father, the, the old year gone. But, Lord, as we look back, we do thank you that... That, that you have proven once again that you're a faithful God, that you've helped us in so, so many ways. And Father, we can look into the new year, Lord, knowing that you're the unchanging God, that while the, the date and the year has changed, that yet, Lord, you're still the same. And we pray, Lord, that your blessing will be upon us today 
And Father, for your word, for your word will go forth now in a moment to the boys and girls. We commend them to you. Pray your blessing upon them. We know, our Father, that the uh, school will be different this week with online teaching. We pray for all our school teachers that you'll help them as they seek to do that. And we know we have school teachers in our own congregation here. Your blessing, our Father, to be upon them and all the boys and girls. And Father, our prayer is, uh, Lord, that each of them are trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. And uh, Father, we pray that even in the midst of, of COVID, maybe they're filled with fear, uncertainty. We pray, Lord, that they will know that you're, uh, that you're looking after them, that you will care for them when they trust in you, Lord. We do pray you will bless our Father, your word to all of our hearts as well. A little later on, as we look at Psalm 61 and ask our Father that you, we would hear the voice of God today. We thank you, Lord, that you're not limited to speaking in a church building. But Lord, you meet with us in our homes. And Father, we pray that as your word will go forth today, it'll go forth in, in tremendous power. The Holy Spirit will give help in the message and the delivery of it, but Lord, in the, in the receiving of it as well. And Lord God, that your word will be a blessing to us as we start into not only a new week, but start into a new year. Thank you again for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you again for his wonderful salvation. Thank you, Father, for uh, the finished work of Calvary. And thank you that the Lord Jesus Christ gave us life, shed his blood, so that we could have eternal life through faith in him. And our prayer is, as well, Father, for people, Lord, to trust in the Lord in these days. That those, Lord, who are still without Christ, without hope, who are still uh, on the broad road, uh, leading to a lost eternity, that this will be the day that they will trust the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. So, Father, we pray your blessing to be upon us, and we ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, I, uh, good to have you uh, this morning. I trust you've been able to enjoy your holidays. I know we've been praying there about it. You're not going to be in school this week, but you'll still have school work to do. But uh, I'm sure some of you are going to miss school. You'd, be, you'd want to get back and see your friends again, be able to tell them all that you got for Christmas. But boys and girls, um, we're not starting back into the Sunday school stuff at the minute. Um, we're going to leave that for a week or two. We'll see how things go because we would like you to be in church in future weeks and have the, uh, the worksheets to be able to do um, in church. This morning, I want to go back, boys and girls. You remember way last year, we, we started something and you did great because you looked around your house and you looked outside your house for different things that uh, that we have still in the present day that were found in the bible times now i have updated my um my presentation uh boys and girls from when i did the talk prepared it yesterday morning but there's something wrong with icloud icloud hasn't updated it so that i can have it on the screen right so you'll not see everything that i wanted to see but you'll still see the most of it and boys and girls some of you well nobody actually mentioned this but what you did was you mentioned um, where you would find this because of course this is a feather and where do we find a feather we find a feather on birds and I know there were a number of you mentioned birds I know Erica um, had a great big beautiful picture of an owl and uh, of course an owl covered with with feathers I know Bethany had I think it was like a little robin as well and, and Brandon um, uh, sorry Lucas uh, mentioned uh, birds as well that we see outside and maybe one or two others mentioned birds as well and of course we see these all around us every day we don't see them so much in the winter time the birds have all gone south to where the warmer weather is but we still see some about and feathers um, are something that that maybe you like to play with maybe you find a feather and you like to uh, be able to, uh, to run your finger through it and you like to be able to hold it and maybe um, do other things say with with the feather and of course there's all sorts of colors of feathers different birds uh, all have their different colors and and sometimes when you go into other parts of the world where uh, where uh, the warmer weather they, uh, they, they they seem to have more colors um, in their feathers uh, boys and girls and uh, and well maybe some of you I don't know if anybody has a parrot if anybody keeps parrots nowadays I can't say that I know anybody that has a parrot but but certainly parrots have lots of colorful feathers and I know we, we the great thing about parrots is, is that they're able to talk a bit as well and and then boys and girls we think of something like the eagle and the vast 
uh, span of its wings and all of its different feathers. And, and boys and girls, the thing about feathers and about wings is that we often think, well, that's the, the reason birds have the, 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 the wings and all of the feathers is so that they can fly. Uh, and of course that is true, they can fly because, if they, ha- because they have, if they didn't, they wouldn't be able to fly, and, and, uh, but yet there's more to it, uh, boys and girls, with regards to a bird having wings and having feathers, because I don't know if you can pick that up on the screen well enough or not, but, but that's a bird that is protecting its, its, its babies. Um, and uh, they're in underneath and uh, well there's the arrows uh, that show where the, the, the baby birds are and boys and girls that's what the bird does the, the mummy bird does as well it protects, uses its wings uses all of its feathers whenever we hold one feather it's quite flimsy it, it can break it quite easy but yet the amazing thing is whenever all of the feathers are put together they pro, they, 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 there's a great strength to them and they, they stop um, harmful things getting them to, uh, to their baby bird. And uh, boys and girls, that's what, uh, that's what happens again. I don't know if you can pick it up on the screen, but there, um, uh, there you have it. That uh, is the baby. And, and, and you can see the, um, the bird there, how it has its wings all spread out and it's protecting its baby. I don't know if we can uh, see it or not, but uh, maybe you can see it on the screen. And say, there's the big wing there, and there's another massive wing there. Uh, and it's protecting, uh, it's protecting uh, the baby there. And it's the same again, boys and girls, with this bird as well. The, um, uh, and underneath are, are the babies. Uh, uh, and they're there protected from, the, from the, the warm weather or maybe from the rain and protected from, from other animals or other birds attacking the baby. And, and there the mummy bird is able to look after his baby, uses his feathers. When all the feathers are together, they, there's a real strength to them and there's a real protection and nothing can get at the, the baby. And, and boys and girls, that's what I've read from Psalm 91 verse 4 this morning. Because it's, it's a great promise for us boys and girls. If we're trusting in God, trusting in God for salvation, that we have asked him to save us from, from our sins, to give us eternal life. And we have made that decision that we're going to follow and live for the Lord Jesus Christ as best we can for the rest of our days. And boys and girls, whenever we, we asked Jesus to be our saviour, whenever we did that, we became part of the family of God. And boys and girls, one of the great things about that is we have God's protection. We have God to look after us, God to care for us. There still will be problems and difficulties in life, but if we are looking to God, he promises us he's going to look after us. Whenever you read there in Psalm 91, the psalmist said in verse 2, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. In other words, he said, God's going to protect me and keep me safe. And we all need to be kept safe. And boys and girls, here in verse 4, God then, or the psalmist uses the birds to, to give himself a picture in his mind of how God looks after us. And he says, God, and, and, and we know God doesn't have feathers, but, but it's, 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 it's the image that he wants us to get in our minds and, and, and the beautiful picture of how good God is to us. And he says, he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. And boys and girls, that's a beautiful picture of how God is looking after us. He shall cover you with his feathers. We don't see that, but yet God, whenever we ask him to protect us, he has all these, uh, uh, this image of all of these feathers put together and of how nothing can get at us to hurt us. And under his wings, we shall take refuge. And boys and girls, in the pictures that are shown to you, we go back to them, there you can see the baby birds there under the wings of their mother. And uh, they're kept safe and uh, protected from all uh, trouble and protected from all the dangers that are about. And boys and girls, as we start into a new year, as you start into a new year, boys and girls, you have the great truth that God will look after you. What God asks is that you keep trusting in him. You keep looking to him for his help. Maybe there's things, boys and girls, and maybe you've never even been able to tell mum or dad. Maybe you've never been able to tell granny or granda. Maybe you've never been able to tell your brother or your sister. You've never been able to tell anyone. But there's things within your heart that make you afraid. 
and you're scared of things and you worry about things. And, and, and maybe mum or dad would, would sense that maybe you're, you're just not in your normal form. They'll say, what's wrong with you? And you'll say, oh, it's nothing. But yet, boys and girls, within your mind, within your heart, there's worry. Maybe something to do with school. Maybe it's bullying. Maybe you're afraid of these days we're living in. You've, uh, and you see people wearing masks all the time. We don't see people smiling. We, uh, we worry about uh, COVID. What's it going to do? Is it, is it going to make people in our family sick? Is it going to make us sick? We have all these worries. But boys and girls, if we trust in God, we have this promise. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. And boys and girls, the next time you're outside... Or maybe you're at their bedroom window and you're looking out, you see a bird and you see all the feathers. Boys and girls, remind yourself of Psalm 91 and verse 4 and of how God will protect you. So as you go out and about, look out the window, there's lessons from the Bible to be seen. And the birds teach us that God has his wings, as it were, protecting us and will keep us safe and we can trust in him through it all. So boys and girls, thank you for listening this morning. A happy new year to you as well. And um, as you get back into schoolwork throughout this week, we trust that you will be able to do well at that and uh, that you'll you'll be able to get back to school and see all your friends again then next week. Uh, Next week we'll have another talk for you. Not sure yet what it'll be, but you make sure you, you be here in church if we're coming. If you can come to church, please do. If not, we'll tune in online and we will have a short message from God, from his word uh, for you the uh, next week. Just a number of uh, announcements I want to mention at this part of the service. Um, really, well, uh, there's hardly any announcements because of what we're, what we're going through at this moment in time. And, and normally, we, we, uh, first week of the, the new year, what we often do, or what we do each year, is we, will, we would meet for, for three nights of prayer. Um, but can I say that uh, we've decided this year uh, to, to, to postpone that in light of um, the increased cases of COVID and we don't want people uh, being put under pressure to come. But what we would ask is that, um, uh, is that you would take that little bit of extra time in prayer at home, praying for the needs of the church, praying for uh, the work of missions, praying for uh, the work that uh, as, as we go forward as a church, the Lord would lead us, the Lord will guide us, praying for government, for those in leadership, praying for all the decisions that are made, praying for an end to COVID, that we ask that why we can't come together uh, here in the church building to pray that maybe at e- evening time, I mean, it would have been Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you can continue on Thursday, Friday as well, if you would like, but just take that little bit of extra time, uh, because really everybody's going to be at, at home, and uh, take that little bit of extra time to really pray uh, for the different things in these days. Uh, but we're not going to be meeting in the church. Maybe in a few weeks' time, maybe when things maybe start to improve, we, we could possibly uh, do that. But there'll be no meetings, and there'll be no meeting on Wednesday night either uh, here in the church. We feel uh, for the safety of all that it's best uh, to do that. So, really, next Lord's Day um, service at 11 o'clock, whether it'll be in church or whether we'll just be online again, we, we have no decisions made yet. We'd love to be back. That's the plan, uh, really, in the sense of that's the desire of our hearts but do follow Facebook and that's where we put on the announcements or uh, find out from others Um, if you're not on Facebook um, find out from others whether we have the service or not uh, next Sunday but do say continue to to pray for all the work and pray that the Lord will bless us and help us as a church in these days so let's come to the Lord now in prayer and uh, let's just commit a number of other matters unto the Lord before we come to uh, his word father we just thank you for the promise uh, this morning here in Psalm 91. Uh, Father, for how you cover us with your wings, that we, the people of God, have that special protection. And Father, we pray that in these days. Indeed, Lord, as we think of COVID, as we think, our Father, of the increased cases of it, we come to ask, our Father, that as a church fellowship, that we as the people of God, Lord, that all the people of God will know your protection 
and safekeeping our Father from it all in these days. We, we ask our Father that as we uh, really embark on this new year, that we would know your help in it all as well. Our Father, we know, uh, Lord God, that we, we run into problems and difficulties in life, but we pray, Lord, that we will know that shielding, that uh, keeping safe, Lord, from it all, and your help, Lord, through it all. And we pray, Lord, for any at this moment in time who particularly are fearful, who are worried about the incoming year, worried about things that are going on in their life, worried about health, worried about finances, worried about their work, worried about their family. Father, we just pray, O oh God, that each Lord will be able to, to, to cast it all upon you and experience, our Father, your protecting uh, hands upon them, our Father, your protecting wings, that, Lord, will shield them and guard them in every way. Bless us. As a church fellowship, our Father, we do pray that you'll uphold us in these days and that through this year, that, Lord, that this is a year that will really count for, for the glory of the Lord. That, Father, we uh, will pray, Lord, that you'll help us in evangelism. Pray, Lord, that you'll help with regards to, to missions and support of missions. We pray, Father, that you will uh, bless our Father, uh, the, the, the proclamation of your word and we pray, Father, that this will be a year, Lord, many will come to know the Lord, but, but we, the people of God, will grow in your ways, will walk in your ways, that we be a people, our Father, who love you with all of our hearts. We thank you again for your faithfulness to us throughout the past year. Uh, again, Father, we commit this year to you. Think of our missionary family. We pray for Nigel and Karis with GMSA, your blessings upon them. For Ryan, as he continues to seek your mind and will, our Father, and we pray for Pablo and Jenny. And as they, our Father, take up the work now in Newton Breda, we thank you for how you blessed them, Father and Grand Canaria, and how you brought them home and you've met their needs and you've helped them. And uh, Father, for the family as they've settled into school life, for the children. But Lord, we pray that as they uh, now, your Father, take up this, uh, take up the mantle in Newton Breda, that your blessing, our God, will be upon them there. Remember Dennis and Marie, and we commend them to you, and think especially of Dennis's health. And uh, Father, as he awaits word of treatment uh, for future days, we pray uh, that you'll give wisdom to the medical folks and guide them, Lord, and bless Dennis and, uh, for his re uh, restoration to full health and strength. And uh, Father, we do pray as well. We know the desire that they had to travel this week out to Grand Canary to help the church there for two years. And Lord, we just pray that you will, uh, you will bless the church. Uh, and in the absence of a pastor and, and somebody to, to lead them and to guide them. And we pray uh, that you, Lord, will show them the way forward. Bless our Father, our government in these days, for all our political leaders. We think of the, uh, the, the folks in the, in, the, in the health profession, decisions to make. Again, we pray for those as well in our church who work in the health profession and caring for others. Protect them all and bless them, Lord, through these days. And that heads of protection... Uh, Lord, if the feathers, the wings of God, will be about them as they go about, our Father, their daily duties each day. We pray, Father, that you will guide our government leaders. We think even of Brexit and, our Father, the introduction of all of that and the different ways of things there, Lord. And again, we just pray that, Lord, you will lead us in these. But most of all, Lord, our prayer is that, Lord, the gospel can go forth in these days. Lord, that's the most vital thing of all. We pray for, uh, Lord, the, the opportunity to do that. Uh, Lord God, that we as your people will, will seek to proclaim the gospel. Never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That you will bless it. And Lord God, that a great work will be done, uh, Lord, uh, from those in authority right down, Father, through society. And a great revival will visit our nation and our land in these days. So, Father, bless your word to all of our hearts now. Speak to us, we pray, and Lord, minister in a fresh way, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Turn with me, please, uh, to Psalm 61. I already mentioned it this morning. We're looking at Psalm uh, 61 this morning. If you had been here uh, this morning, you would have received this. Um, you see it on the screen, but I have it in my hand, and that is the model text really that the Lord has led me to uh, for us as a church um, for the incoming year. Um, really, we're looking at the words of verse 2, uh, but we want to really this morning look at the first four verses of the psalm. Verses 5 to 8 do follow on, but um, really it's, it's verses 1 to 4 the Lord has, has really led me to this morning as we uh, come to look at this model text 
the, the particular part is that, but you, you maybe see in the screen, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. But you'll be able to get these cards on future occasions. Hopefully next Sunday, maybe you'll be back. We'll be able to be back here again. Um, but they'll be available uh, throughout the year. You can take them, put them on your fridge door, put them up somewhere in your home that you can read it regularly. Remind yourself of this great promise, uh, this great desire of the psalmist, what he experienced and why he prayed this. And that really that's what we're looking at this morning. But verses 1 to 4, Psalm 61, they read, Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert or the covering, the shelter of thy wings. And then at the end of verse 4, we see uh, uh, the word Selah, which just simply means pause and break and think about it and worship the Lord for what has been said. Really, that's what we're going to uh, do this morning and uh, think about what God says here uh, in these verses. One of the, the lasting memories among many concerning 2020, I believe, will be that of cancelled holidays. It will be remembered, yes, for, for so many other things, so many other uh, reasons. But one of the major impacts from COVID-19 is that of restrictions on overseas travel. How the airline business has been greatly affected by it, how it will survive, what re really uh, remains to be seen. But at this point in time, I have to say that with regards particularly to the first half of 2021, um, it's not looking too hopeful in terms of travel and being able to go overseas and enjoy our holidays there. I have been to, to America in recent years, especially um, as, as Heather and myself, we love to attend a Bible conference in, in, in Ripley, North Mississippi, and not too far from the city of Memphis, which is in, in the state of Tennessee. But if you're somebody that has traveled to America Maybe you have traveled to the state of Wyoming. I, I've never been there, have myself, I've never traveled to Wyoming. But I mention this because in northeastern Wyoming is, a, is really a must-see visitor attraction. And it's known, and hopefully you can see it on the screen here, um, it's known as the Devil's Tower. Regarding the Devil's Tower, President Theodore Roosevelt, he proclaimed the Devil's Tower um, as the first national monument of America way back in 1906. Devil's Tower, uh, with his vertical face, it rises 867 feet from the base of it right up to the very summit of it. The top is dome-shaped and it's 400 feet by 200 feet. The first climb of the Devil's Tower that is known was way back in 1893, and uh, I don't have the name of the man who did that, but he used pegs to make a ladder to get himself to the very top of it. George Hopkins then was the only person um, uh, to, to climb down the tower. Uh, now, the person in 1893, I don't know how they get down, but this is taken from Wikipedia. And it says George Hopkins was the only person to climb down the tower, that is, without climbing up it first of all. Actually, what he did was he parachuted onto the top of it, but he couldn't get down and he had to wait six days until he was rescued and be able to come down the side of this mountain. Uh, they say that really to climb the Devil's Tower, it's impossible to do it unless you have climbing experience. And of the half million visitors, more or less, to the Devil's Tower every year, they estimate that only 1% of it, or all of that number, actually ever reach the top in the present day. Devil's Tower is a must-see attraction for everybody who goes to the state of Wyoming. It's a, it's a bit like Ayers Rock um, that is in central Australia um, for anybody that, that ever goes near there or certainly for anybody 
that ever comes to Northern Ireland, well, it's a bit like the Giant's Causeway where uh, people need uh, to go and see that. Now, whenever we think of the Devil's Tower, I don't know why it was named this. But while most of us may never see it in person, praise God that in life that we have daily access, not to the Devil's Tower, but to the Rock of Rocks. The one that we know is the Rock of Ages, because we have daily access to the Lord himself. And that's the great teaching of Scripture. That's the great truth that you find through Scripture time and time again. And one such reference to the Lord being a rock, or should we say the rock of all rocks, is Psalm 61 and verse 2, where the psalmist says, say, this is our motto text, the psalmist says, from the end of the earth will I cry unto you when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Now this is in the context of the psalmist David praying. We see that, I mean, excuse me, in your Bible, it'll say to you, uh, or tells you there at the very start that this is a psalm of David. And, and really, it's in the context of him praying. Four very simple things I want to highlight to you this morning as we embark, as we start out on this new year. I want you to note, first of all, with me this morning, the extremity of his prayer. The extremity, or that is the extreme circumstances uh, behind David's prayer. Notice here again verses 1 and 2. Uh, beautiful words, I believe, learning. If you, uh, 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 if you want something to learn this week, learn the first four verses uh, word by word in, in whatever uh, version you have of the Bible. But uh, here in verses 1 and 2 it says, Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer from the end of the earth. Will I cry unto thee or will I pray unto thee? Will I call out unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed? How helpful and encouraging these words of David are. We're not sure really what the background to this psalm um, um, was in David's life in terms of what David was up against. But, but most important of, uh, really is the truth of it all. And the truth this morning that we, we see, first of all, in this is, is this. No matter how distant we feel that we are from God, and no matter how overwhelmed we are with whatever it is in life, the truth is this, we can cry unto God for help. That's the first great truth that we see here this morning in this psalm. No matter how distant we feel that we are from God, maybe um, as you look back over 2020, and, and, and as you think of 2021, and often what, what happens at the end of 2020 and moving into the new year, at the end of any year, moving into the new year, what often happens is this, people stop to take stock of their lives. They stop to look at where they're at in life. They stop to look at what has happened in the past year and the good things that have happened. But they think as well of maybe the, the bad things or things that, 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 that really has crept into their life that, that they know shouldn't be in their life. And whenever they look into the new year, well, we often talk about New Year's resolutions, but people say, well, here's what's going to happen in the new year. And maybe as you look back over this past year, what you, what you have come to the conclusion is, is, that, is that you are, are, are far from God. Or you're not, you haven't been walking with God as you should have been. And the, but the great truth is this, is that no matter how distant or how far we feel that we are from God, and no matter how, um, how overwhelmed we are with life's circumstances, and maybe that's where you're at at the moment in time, uh, the great truth is this, that you can still cry unto God for help. The Bible believers, or believers Bible commentary, it says these words, and I quote, The psalmist is not literally at the end of the earth. But he is literally in a place of extremity where safety and deliverance seem remote, where life ends and death begins. Physically and emotionally he is spent, but he knows that the throne of grace, and this is the great truth, he knows that the throne of grace is only a breath away. So he draws near to receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Distance, someone has said, 
is meaningless, a new extremity of life effective in blocking prayer. What a lovely truth this is this morning. With COVID so rife, what, 10 months on from it really at first hit here, and really the dark days of January, we talk about the dark days of January and February ahead of us, what is a fear for so many people? Well, I believe that for so many people, uh, catching COVID is a fear. But I think there are other things as well that fill people's hearts with fear. Depression, the fear of depression, me- mental health issues. And, 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 and the question then is, is how, how, does, how do these leave a person? Well, I think it leaves them, as the psalmist felt here in Psalm 61 and verse 2, that they feel that they're at the end of the earth. At the ends of the earth, they feel that they're far from God, they feel that they're far from help, and they feel overwhelmed, just as as the psalmist says here in verse 2, he says, from the end of the earth, will I cry unto thee, he felt so far from God, and then uh, he says, when my heart is overwhelmed. Perhaps that's where you are this morning. Yes, many other things leave people, including Christians and What we must remember is that David, who wrote this psalm, was one of God's choice children. But yet this is how he felt in life. We hold David up on a pedestal. We know, yes, he's he's a man who sinned against God with with committing adultery and and, and responsible for murder. But yet we, we know that That he was a friend of God. We know that he was one who walked so closely with God so often. And so often we think that when it comes to the down down times in his life or the the not so good times, we think of his adultery. We think of the the, the events then that followed on from that. But sometimes we don't see that we don't see this. That he's a man who felt he was so far from God. He was a man who felt so overwhelmed with the circumstances of life. But we we can take encouragement in this because what is it he did? He still felt even in the midst of being so far from God and overwhelmed with life, he felt or he knew he could cry unto God. Whatever it is we're going through, be encouraged today that we're not cut off from him. Nothing, not even life, death, Anything can separate us from the love of God. We're not so far away that he cannot hear us. We're not so overwhelmed when life's pain uh, that, that, that he cannot hear or cry in the midst of perhaps great sobbing. Sometimes when people are overwhelmed, they're sobbing, and, 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 and if you're with them at that time, it's very hard sometimes to make out what people are saying. In the midst of all of their sobbing, and they're being overwhelmed, you can't make it out. But the great truth for us is, is that God sees the pain of the heart. And God knows exactly the help that we need. So we see, first of all, the extremity of his prayer. But I want you to note secondly with me the extraordinary in his prayer. The extraordinary in his prayer. Whatever David was up against, he knew exactly where he wanted to be. He knew where he wanted to be. Where is it we find him? He feels that he's at the end of the earth. He feels totally overwhelmed with life circumstances. But yet the great truth is, is that even whenever he was in this place, that he still knew where exactly he wanted to be. Look again at verse 2. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Then he said this, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, David is in, a, is in a, a song of thanksgiving, which actually became Psalm 18, the two are parallel. But in verse 32 of 2 Samuel 22, which actually is Psalm 18 and verse 31, David said these words, he says, For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? David needed the rock that was higher than himself because 
David knew he could not save himself. As great as a man as he was, there were times in his life where he could not get through what he was facing unless he had the Lord because only the Lord could, could give him that help and that protection and shield him from the enemy that he faced. That he talks about in verse uh, 3, he says, For thou hast been a shelter, we'll come to this more in a moment. He says, Thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. The enemy was fierce at times in David's life. It was anything but a bed of roses for him. But but in life, David had learned that God the rock, the rock that was higher than him, could be trusted at any time. I hope you can see the photo on the screen. You may be able to recognize that rock face as as you look at it there. If not, you'll be able to see it on the photo whenever, whenever you get the card at a later date. But that photograph was actually taken um, at Giant's Causeway. Say many people, it's a must-see uh, visitor attraction for them. And the particular day that that, that photograph uh, was taken was, was a very stormy day. We had American visitors with us. They wanted to go to the Giant's Causeway and... Um, the day that we went, there was a real storm. But up on the head of the rock um, wasn't a safe place to be. It's not a place that you could have stood very long because up there in the head of the rock, you got the full force of the wind, you got the full force of the storm. And, and unless you were, say, were careful, you could easily get blown over by it all. But the amazing thing about it all is this, is that just a few feet away from the edge of the head there that you see at the top of the photograph, um, down the other side where, where that photograph was taken, it was really calm. It was really calm. You, wouldn't, you couldn't feel the wind at all. It was like a different day completely. And yet we could hear the storm, we could hear the noise of the wind. And and, and whenever we turned around and we looked out across the bay, you could see the the storm and the sea. There were massive waves that were coming in over the bay uh, there at the Giant's Causeway. But yet where we stood, it was all calm as the rock. It was a a great shelter for us from the storm. And and what a picture, I believe, of God that, that we have here whenever we turn to him in the storm. What is it the hymn writer wrote, Rock of uh, Ages, cleft for me? Let me hide myself in thee. And you see, that's what makes the difference in the storm. The one who is the extraordinary. The one who is God. The one who is unlike us. The one indeed who is able to shield us, to protect us. And to give us that place of safety, of refuge, that fortress. In the midst of the storm. How exactly he gives that to us. In the midst of life's storms. I don't know. But I have experienced it. You're going through the storm. And you feel a calmness. You feel a peace. You know that God. Is looking out for you. God is looking after you. God is protecting you. In the cleft. Of the rock. The psalmist here, he talks, David talks about the extremity of his prayer. We see the extraordinary in his prayer. I want you to note thirdly with me the experience to his prayer. The experience to his prayer. David had been down this road before, or certainly he had faced something similar before. But not only had he experienced something similar before, but he had experienced the Lord's help To bring him through it and to bring him out the other side. That's what he talks about in verse 3 of Psalm 61. He says, For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. And the great truth that we learn from this is that David's past experiences helped him in his present circumstances. And that's something that is so key for us to remember in life as we think of our past experiences, of how God has helped us in past experiences. May that be an encouragement to help us in our present circumstances. I know at this time of the year, Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 is often quoted or referred to as the Apostle Paul. He said, this one thing I do. 
Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. And maybe that's a verse that you have already been looking at over these past number of days. In fact, whenever I was preparing for this, I turned, um, I turned to uh, a book and, and, and uh, thinking of the, the old year and thinking of the new year, this was the very verse that it referred to. And so often whenever we read that verse, what we think is that we, we, we must forget about all the things of the past and we only look forward and, and focus on the things that are ahead of us. But, but I don't believe that that's, that's what the verse is fully saying. Because David here, he looked back. It would be contradictory with what Paul would be saying if we weren't to look back at all. David looked back. He says, For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Yes, there are things that we do want to forget. But there are some things we need to remember. And one of the things we must remember is the goodness of God and of how God has helped us through past experiences, through past troubles, through past difficulties, and know that indeed God has held us up and God has brought us through it. And the God of the past is still the God of, the, of today because he's the unchanging God. Say so here in verse 3, what is that he's doing? He's speaking in the past tense. He says, for thou hast been. And in Psalm 40 and verses 1 and 2, we know it so well. He, he did exactly the same there. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also. So he's talking about what the Lord has done in the past. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. The rock that is higher than I really is a shelter and strong tower for all who cry unto him. They're not just titles that are given to him to make him sound good, to look better than all the other gods that the other people of David's society would have been talking about that at that time. Uh, they, 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 these titles, they were what David had experienced before in life. And these are what David looked back on to help him in the present to be able to press on into the future. You see, looking back to the right things, it brought him hope. Looking back to God's faithfulness in the past, it brought him confidence. It gave him that confidence to press on. It brought him encouragement because he knew that, that God is an unchanging God and that, 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 that God, as he has helped him in the past, is able to help him now in the present. I know and I've seen it over the last number of days. I've even received messages wishing me a happy new year. And, but, and some of the messages that I receive from people there was, there was mention of how they were glad to see the back of 2020. Maybe that is how you felt over these past few days. With the way 2020 has turned out, say nobody ever uh, expected uh, it to be what it was. And many people are, are glad to see the back of 2020. But yet here we are at the start of 2021. And the question we ask is this, why? Why are we here now? Why are we at the start of 2021? Is it not because in the midst of the difficulties of 2020, we sought his help and today... We're still pressing on because God has heard our prayers and God is keeping us going into the future. God really has been a shelter and a strong tower to us. In the midst of painful circumstances, maybe sometimes when we look back, what we do is we focus on the pain. Why not focus on the goodness of God? The faithfulness of God, the supremacy of God, the sovereignty of God, of how God has given us that strength at times whenever we felt that we were at rock bottom, that God has lifted us up and he has helped us to keep pressing on. May we also, like David, let past experiences help us in present circumstances. There's the extremity. 
to his prayer, the extraordinary in his prayer, the experience of his prayer. He looked back, but that was able to help him look forward. And then I want you to note finally, and, and, and I hope you can understand what I'm saying here. I've, I've put it in uh, commas here. Uh, the, the extensions to his prayer. We see this in verse 4. Hopefully you, you can see it with me uh, this morning. He says, I will abide. Uh, 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 after all that he has said, and he once led to the rock that is higher than himself, and, and he talked about how God has been a shelter and a strong tower. He then says this in verse 4. Uh, I believe as a result of it all, this is the impact then of it all on him. He says, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert or the shelter of thy wings. I see the extension here in two ways. I believe we see first of all abiding. Abiding that's the first extension in his life that's going to happen. He says I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. The word abide it means being somewhere for a long time to come. Perhaps a longer time than normal is what we would call an extended period of time. This is the extension to his prayer. He's going to do something as a result of what God has done in his life and that is he's going to abide in his tabernacle forever. Now um, in thy tabernacle signifies being in the Lord's presence. Most likely not literally in the tabernacle. David is not saying that from now on if you want to find me I'm going to be in the tabernacle of God. Now what he was, uh, and, and you know that actual tent that they had, remember that in David's day the temple still had not been built and it was the tabernacle that, that, that they were, were familiar with, the, the, the tent. See the temple hadn't been built. But David isn't saying, if you want to find me from now on, I'm going to be literally in that tent. No, what he's saying is, I'm going to be in the Lord's presence no matter where I am at. From now on, tabernacle means to meet together. He would tabernacle with God. As a result of what has happened in his life, him seeing the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God, David is saying here, he says, from now on, I'm going to be closer to the Lord than I've ever been. Maybe that's our New Year's resolution. How are we getting on with it? We're in day three. Maybe as you've taken stock, you've looked back over the past year, you say, well, it hasn't been the walk with God as it should have been. So therefore, in the new year, it's going to change. David says, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. Could we maybe say, I will abide in thy tabernacle for 2021? Make that our first goal. That we're going to meet with God. Feel or sense or have that, that feeling that we're, uh, that focus that we're, in, we're, we're with, with God all the time. Because he's a faithful God. So what he talks about here is abiding. In fact, when you look at John 15, what is it Jesus says? He says, abide in me. Couldn't be with Jesus all the time, but yet spiritually we can. That we're seeking to walk in his ways. Enjoy fellowship with him, calling out to him at all times and letting him speak to us through his word and the Holy Spirit doing a work within our hearts that we know he's with us at all times. So what I see in these two verses, or sorry, in this one verse, um, as I think of the extensions to his prayer, going to be extended time with the Lord, he's going to abide. But then I see also hiding. He says, I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Covert simply means shelter. And it's the shelter of his wings, a place that he would hide through the storm. I was at the causeway, I made sure I got down to where the, the wind wouldn't be felt. That's where I hid. I was protected. I was sheltered from the storm. And David here talks about where he will hide. But yet, whenever we think of the psalm, we think of the context, the background to the psalm, where is it David was at? He said, from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. This being the case, of David feels in his own mind that he's at the end of the earth. The picture that comes into my mind is this, is the Lord Extending his wings to the end of the earth to shelter his child. 
the Lord is able to do that. We're not beyond his shelter. We're not beyond his protection. Isn't that what the, 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 the focus here is in these opening verses? And whenever David thinks about all this, and he's at the end of the earth and he's thinking of the Lord extending his wings, that's what he says, I will trust in the shelter of thy wings. What's that David then says? Selah. Selah simply means a moment of pause to praise the Lord. Surely this morning that's what we want to do. Whenever we think of what the Lord does for us. And really this morning we're coming to, uh, I forgot to mention earlier, coming to remember the Lord. I trust you have the emblems there with you. But we come to partake of the bread and the wine and why is it we're able to come and do this as those of us who are saved that are the children of God? It's because we're under the protection of the Lord. Under the protection of the shed blood. That we are now the children of God. And that's one of the great truths of Calvary and of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. And the impact that it has upon us in our lives. Yes, praise God, we're in the family of God. But we have a loving Father who extends his arms, wings, to protect us from the evil of this world, from the evil of the day and age in which we're living. And yes, we see it around us, and at times it does come right onto our doorstep. But yet we think of how he protects us from the torments of evil and hell. We're saved. And we're never going to suffer as the unrighteous will suffer. That's a challenge today to those who are still unsaved that today, that all oh, that you see what the Lord wants to give to you in your life, to deal with your sin, to remove the eternal punishment from your life, that you know that now you're under the Lord's protection and that nothing shall ever separate you from the love of God. Will you not come, put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ today, experience his shelter from sin and from, from, the, the, from the, the punishment of sin and come and today and know that you're safe safe in the Lord we're going to come now if you're saved this morning encourage you invite you to join with me as we partake of the emblems the bread and the wine we'll give thanks for the two together this morning just thank the Lord for them and then we will partake of them as we think of what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us we think of his extended arms on the cross of Calvary and all so often it's a picture that, oh, we are over on one side. We're separated from God and God is on the other side. Maybe you've seen that picture. And the picture is then of the cross of Calvary and of how the cross, it, 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 it reconciles man to God. And yet I don't know that that cross was the extended arms of Jesus. So that we could cross from our sin and be brought into the family and fold of God. Be reconciled to God. Become a child of God and know that we are his forever and ever. Let's today give thanks as we think of the significance and the impact of it all upon us today. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Bless your word as we think of it in present day circumstances. But Father, as we now pause and as we worship you, Lord, we come to think of it in the light of what the Lord Jesus Christ did upon the cross of Calvary, those extended arms, but there how he took upon himself the very punishment that we deserve for our sins. Father, we thank you for the bread that reminds us of that body that was so cruelly bruised and broken for us. We thank you, Father, of the, the cup that reminds us of the shed blood, the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, the great truth that it's the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin. And today, Lord God, that all sin is under the blood of the Saviour. So, Father, as we partake of the emblems, accept our thanks. And bless, uh, Father, our, our time on reflecting upon all of these truths this morning as we partake of the emblems and we truly will worship you. And as the psalmist says, Selah, may we pause to reflect and remember. In Jesus' name we pray. Take of the bread, first of all, the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. 
So partake of the bread. Uh, let's do it together. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had stopped saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye in remembrance of me, for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. So let's partake of the cup as we think of the shed blood. Father, again, we just thank you for these few moments. But Lord, may we continue this on in our day. Uh, Father, we just don't focus on Calvary at the time of the Lord's Supper. But Lord, it uh, is continually in our thoughts. And uh, Father, we just want to thank you, Father, for how we, the children of God, are the most blessed people in all of the earth. Thank you, Father, for what Christ did for us in purchasing our redemption in the price and fill. And thank you, Father, for all the spiritual blessings that we have through faith in him. May they be a blessing to us this week. Your word be a blessing to us, uh, not only this week, throughout this year. And our Father, may, Lord, each day we be led to the rock that is higher than I, higher than us, that, Lord God, that we abide in thee, Lord, abide in you, and enjoy your presence day by day. So, Father, bless your word. Bless us all. Bless our families again. Praying that your, your help, your protection will be upon us. That we walk in your ways and we bring glory to your name. So, Father, we commend all to you, Lord, now. And we ask it all in our Saviour's precious, most worthy, and most wonderful name. Amen. And amen. Again, thank you for joining with me uh, this morning. Uh, say next week we will try. We will let you know through the week as to what's happening. Plan is certainly the desire. We'll be back in church for eleven. Be online as well, but we'll let you know if everything is going to be online. We trust you have a good week and do keep safe. Uh, but do keep your eyes fixed on the Lord and keep trusting in Him through all things in these days. Thank you and God bless.